What's up guys, it's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some tactics and instructions for the 5-4-1 formation, one of the most broken formations in FIFA 23. But just before we get started guys, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop this a thumbs up. It's team of the season, so if you guys need any coins, make sure you check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're fast, cheap and reliable. And if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a nice 5% discount. Okay guys, so starting off with the custom tactics for the defensive style I like to have this on balance this is so we have the greatest control over our defense where when we need to press higher and win the ball back we're able to do that and then when we want to drop off be a little bit more passive we're also able to do that so give, putting this on balance gives us the most control over our players which the other settings do not give us moving on to the defensive width guys I have this on 40 at the moment this is so we can primarily defend in a nice narrow and compact shape which will stop all those attacks right through the middle it's important to maintain a bit of width though so we can cover the wider areas in case an opponent tries an attack down the wing this is why we don't lower the width any more than this moving on to the depth guys I like to have this on 60 this is because it's a really nice balanced defensive line in my opinion if we have the depth too low you'll quite often find yourself getting pinned back all the time and there is constant pressure on you and on the flip side if you have the depth too high then one through ball will completely destroy you because your defensive line is just way too high so I like to go for a balance where sometimes I can sit a little bit deeper other times I can win the ball back higher up the pitch moving on to build up play guys I have this on balance this is because it's the most consistent in my opinion the thing with balanced is you can kind of play however you want whenever you want so if you were using something like slow build up for example you're always restricted to playing a slow style you can't just randomly decide to play a little bit faster same with fast build up you always have to play quickly you can't play slower but with balance you can pick and choose when you play slower and when you play faster moving on to the chance creation guys I like to have this on direct passing this is because it's by far the most meta option in the game so your attacking players will like bunch up against the op opposition defenders so you can do the really overpowered 1v1 isolation plays players also make those extra movements in the box so you can get off that extra pass to guarantee the goals the other settings do not offer you this which is why I say direct passing is so important moving on to the width guys I don't really use a specific number here but I just have this on 48 the reason for this is I don't want my width to be crazy low to the point where the team feels way too narrow because that's not too beneficial and on the flip side I don't want it to be too wide to the point where my players are way too spread out uh, and playing a simple pass becomes difficult so I kind of just like to go for something balanced which is why I settled on 48 moving on to players in box guys I have this on six this is so we can get some players into the box to create those chances but at the same time we don't overcommit the entire team to the point where we're always getting counter attacked as for corners and free kicks I have these on one because there is a set piece routine that I use which requires these to be on one there is a link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen if you are interested now moving on to the types of players you want to use guys because a lot of people ask what types of players you should be using with certain formations so I thought I'd just make some suggestions on each position so you know what kind of thing to aim for uh, but yeah it's just a guide it's not something you have to use if you don't want Want. but starting off with the striker I suggest going for a nice balanced striker this is because you kind of have to get the balance that you would be able to get in two players uh, in a two striker formation for example all in one player because you have to make up for the fact that there is one striker instead of two so I like to go for somebody that is nice and well-rounded and can do a bit of everything you know shoot on either foot somebody with an okay dribbling ability someone that can pass uh, someone that is quick of course uh, the reason I like to do this is because like I said you have to compensate for the fact that there's one striker instead of two and you don't want to find yourself being like super one dimensional by using like a really clunky striker that can't do anything other than run and shoot so yeah that is what I'd suggest for the striker moving on to the right mid and left mid I suggest just using like really nice attacking players uh, the most important thing is that obviously these players are quick and have a decent creative ability because if they're not very creative you're going to struggle as the right mid and left mid are important uh, in terms of going forward so it is important that they do have 
have some attacking ability. You don't really have to worry about their defensive stats though. It's really not important. So don't think you have to use somebody that has really good defensive stats as it's not the case. Just use whoever you feel comfortable with in the right mid and left mid positions. As for the left center mid, I like to go for a more defensive minded midfielder. This is somebody that's going to stay back and make sure we're as good defensively as we can possibly be. So I would suggest somebody with a medium high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contribution in defense and they're not too bothered about going forward. Moving on to the right center mid, I like to go for a more box to box style player. This is somebody that's going to attack and defend and have a bit of a free roll. So I would suggest somebody with a high high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contributions in both attack and defense. That's just something I like to do. Again, you guys don't have to do it if you do not want to. Moving on to the wing backs, uh, what you can do here is what I've done. So I have like one actual fullback in one of the wing back positions, this being Roberto Carlos, and then in the other one I have an actual attacking winger in the uh, right wing back position, this being Saka. Uh, the reason I do this is so like one of them is really really good going forward, uh, and the other one is like really good defensively. So we've got like a balance there. But I would suggest having at least one winger in one of the wing back positions because these players do actually go forward in. Contribute on the attack. That being said, you can use two fullbacks in these positions if you like, or you could go super aggressive and use two actual wingers. It is completely up to you. As for the three centre backs, these just need to be the meta defenders. These are players that are obviously very fast, strong, uh, medium high work rate if you can get it, and obviously decent animation choices. You guys know the types of defenders you should be using, uh, and the goalkeeper really doesn't matter because, yeah, they're all terrible in this game. Now, moving on to the player instruction guys on the striker I have him on stay central and mixed attack uh, the reason I have him on stay central is so he's always in the correct positions where the striker should be we don't want him drifting out into the wider areas as we already have enough players covering those spaces we need him to be in the middle we need him to be in the correct position to finish off those chances for us super important to have him on stay central in my opinion I also have him on mixed attack as opposed to getting behind as I feel like you get a lot more out of the player this way when you put them on getting behind sometimes it can make strikers especially very one-dimensional uh, and you don't get too much out of them. On mixed attack they make much more dynamic runs, they get more involved in the build-up and I think it is just much easier to attack. Moving on to the right mid and the left mid, we have them on come back on defence, cut inside and get into the box for cross. We have them on come back on defence so they always fulfil their defensive duties when we don't have the ball. This is just like a position thing. If you put them on basic defensive support, sometimes they get a bit lazy and it's just too easy for your opponent to run through you but if you put them on come back on defense it ensures that they keep a nice shape in the team uh, which is super important in my opinion uh, I also have them on cut inside this is so they will run into the narrow areas which are very difficult uh, to mark for your opponent this will make more sense when we go uh, and look at the wing backs but we have them on cut inside so they will go into those more narrow areas uh, and make those incisive runs we also have them on get into the box for cross so they're not hesitant to get into the penalty area uh, when we do approach the penalty box as on balance crossing runs they can be a little bit hesitant uh, and it's not too useful we do need some extra support in the penalty area especially when we only have like one striker in the team uh, moving on to the left center mid the more defensive minded player we have him on stay back while attacking and cover center we have him on stay back because obviously he's a more defensive minded player so we don't want him going forward uh, we also have him on cover center so he does defend those central areas moving on to the right center mid where we use an actual box to box player we have him on the default settings and cover center we have him on the default settings because you know we don't really want to restrict this player all that much he's a box to box player so he does have a bit of a free roll which is why it's not too important to uh you know give him specific instructions the only important thing is that we have him on cover center so he does defend those central areas moving on to the wing backs we have them both on join the attack and overlap now if we look back on what we did with the left mid and the right mid we have them both on the cut inside instruction which means these players are going to make more runs into the narrow areas to like assist our striker 
Now, if we put the wing backs on join the attack and overlap, when the left mid and right mid are running into those narrow pockets of space, these players are going to make the overlapping runs to add the extra width to the team. So we have players in both the narrow areas and the wide areas at the same time, making it very difficult for your opponent to defend it. We obviously have them on join the attack, so they're always looking to contribute to the attack. They're not going to be too much use to us if they're always staying back. Uh, as for the three centre backs and the goalkeeper, these are on the default settings and I do not touch them. But yeah, guys, they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 541. If you have enjoyed or found this useful, please be sure to drop this a thumbs up. Sub to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.